Hi everyone, and welcome back to TSW2, and obviously my channel. The reason why I've come back so soon after that up big update video is because I wanted to try out a couple of routes that I've bought for TSW2. One of them, of course, is Hulkstricker Humble to Lubeck. And I think that now means that I've got just about every German route in TSW2. Of course, this one is a, is a remake of the old train simulator version of Humble to I don't remember too well, so it'll be interesting to see how this new version fares on its own merits, as it were. One thing I've already noticed is that there's no representation of the S-Bahn service with the BR474 EMU, um, and it's not like the train simulator version, which did get an extension in the form of the Hamburg S-Bahn S1 or S1 line. I'm pretty sure Ains is how you say one German, but please do correct me if I'm wrong. From what I gather, this Humboldt to Lubeck route includes, well, the BR112 locomotive that we can see here for to, uh, the passenger services, and then for freight, you've got the, is it the, I think it's the MRCE ES64U2 Taurus, uh, which to me is, is aesthetically quite similar to the Deutsche Bahn BR 112, uh, sorry, 182, or as I call it, Blink 182. And as you can tell, we've joined it, we've joined this lot at Hamburg Hauptbahnhof. And this is a scenario that this is one of these scenarios with the route, so we'll be taking this lot. Well, it, it, it's just saying that it's the scenario description is quite basic because it essentially just says to do a run from Hamburg to Lübeck, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Waiting for the just waiting for instructions. Ah, so it's just setting up. Looks very. This whole setup process does look quite similar to the uh, BR143. I mean, this I can see that this engine's got that strange speed selector controller like the 143. And the horn has been found in the introduction. It's exactly the same as the BR143. I feel like that's going to be a recurring theme where I keep getting the BR112 confused with the BR143. And they certainly look quite similar. Although for me the major difference, the only real difference in terms of aesthetics is the fact that this 112 has got a slightly different front end. Not to mention that I've just realised another difference. The 112 doesn't have like separate red and white marker lights like 143 does. Germany, but then again, I shouldn't be surprised if we've got like the like Toronto Ramp Dresden to Chemnitz routes with the which has that BR612 diesel multiple units. Mind you, I suppose this was when I first got the old Hamburg to Lübeck route and train simulator, I wasn't anywhere near as knowledgeable on German railways as I am now, which isn't really saying much in all honesty. The station we're just passing on the left is one of the S Bahn stations. Now, the curious, for me, the most unusual aspect of the Hamburg S-Bahn is that it uses third rail electrification. And the unfortunate thing is, I remember that last time I tried driving that BR474 on an S-Bahn service, I think from Hustlebrook to 
Hamburg of Tona. The frame rates were just about unbearable, even on the underground section. The good thing is that for this run, at least, it's like the lag, uh, the frame rate's not too bad. If anything, we might actually be able to finish this run to full back without losing too much patience. similar if not the same as the BR-143 and in all seriousness this well, first impression to this BR-112 are not the best because it, to me it just seems far too much like the BR-143 I mean this cab for instance it just looks like a more modern version of the 143 you know the news this station that we're coming up or that we're passing right now I believe that is Hustle Marcel Brook on Earth's uh, Mark in the background. I always uh, apologise because of my knowledge of German pronunciation is low. It does seem like quite a long train. Incidentally, I don't remember too much from the original uh, hum Hamburg to Lübeck route and train simulator. But what I do remember, and this is actually quite fascinating, I don't know if that many people know this, but this section is actually used by the international services that run between Hamburg and in Germany and Copenhagen in Denmark. And I believe that they normally use the, I think, the Danish IC3 DMUs for that run. And this is Hasselbrook, I'm pretty sure. Yep, because you can see there's the S-Bahn line curving off to the left. I find that quite disappointing that there's absolutely no representation of like S-Bahn trains in this add-on. So that's one area where the train simulator version is better. But in my case, I generally prefer TSW2 routes because it is a lot easier to just get uh, to load up the game and get straight into driving something or just walk exploring the platforms and run right and popping on and off trains as you please. And that to me is the way I prefer to do it because with train simulation of course, while you do certainly have a lot more freedom to decide what locomotives and rolling stock or multiple units you include on a route, like in, a, in just a free mode scenario, and in my case that's where I kind of go a bit nuts with I suppose imagination, if that's the right word to use, but... So, to summarise, with the... with making... with getting something going in Train Simulator, uh, it does certainly take a lot longer, but you do get more freedom to choose what motor power you like. Whereas with TSW, you don't necessarily get that freedom as much, but it, you can still get into the game a lot easier and quicker. These uh, consists for the passenger services on this route. Now, they definitely seem like some of the longest I've seen on any German routes, especially with regards to Doppelstock Bargain consists. Incidentally, the last time that I can recall being on the uh, original Humboldt to Lübeck route and train simulator was actually when I used one of the stations, I think it was Bad Oberslow. I used one of the stations in this room, as I said, I'm not sure it was, it was that one that we're going to now, as, for want of a better term, a filming location for one of the Ice Train Evolution video I made. Uh, I don't think, I can't imagine I'll remember to put a link to that in the top right corner, because generally I really do struggle to do that. And uh, actually, that's a point. Uh, I've got some. I've got some paper in front of me, so I'll write. Uh, I'm just going, writing a, a note for myself, so that when I go to upload this video, I'll know that at when looking at it and see the 14:17 timestamp, I know to put a uh, put in a card to the or a link to the Ice Evolution video, which includes the. I think it includes just about every ice train that we've got in Train Simulator. Except the, I believe it's 
the BR407 or new ice 3 um, but please do correct me if I'm wrong so I should add that um, that even though I've said and I said in that big update video uh, that I intend to take well words to the effect of intending to take a long break from putting videos on YouTube right like, um, oh wait no I already said that at the start as we were watching this I should add that one thing I always, one thing I generally forget is just how annoying the like root introduction scenarios are in TSW because they're always exactly the same in terms of their structure. If you if you you if you you, you, well, if you play TSW as well, you might have had to suffer through those horrible intro introduction scenarios. So I don't really, frankly I don't really want to recount them. Now, how on earth would you pronounce this the second part of the station's name? It sounds like a corruption of... To me, it, this, this honestly looks like a corruption of Ronstadt. As in Linda Ronstadt. I know that's not how... Um, I know that's not how most people pronounce her name, but... Because of how it's spelt, I always think it's... It, I always think it's Linda Ronstadt. Because Jim Spellings. Or coincidental spellings, I suppose. I don't remember how long this route is. Because I just didn't think to check on the Steam page. Okay. So, actually, that's a point. Uh, if you've got both the Transplanter and the TSW versions of Humboldt to Ruby, which one do you think is better? If you have a video preference on this. Wow. Did you, did you see that? The paint graph just did a very quick, like, flexing up and down motion because the, of the wires had to suddenly dip down to go into that bridge. That's, of course, one of the things I like about TSW is that they've worked out a realistic pantograph animation. Although I remember I, I saw that, this, that sort of feature a few years earlier with, the, I think it's the GE 4 4 Mark III locomotive on the Albula line the train simulator. I think it was one of the first Swiss routes ever made for the game, certainly in a uh, payway capacity. Probably goes without saying, but I know absolutely nothing about like, the services that run on this section between Hamburg and Lübeck, or like what sort of locomotives prototypically run on along, along here. I yeah, I mean, at the time of upload recording, I haven't yet checked the the uh, services and timetable mode, so I don't know what other locomotives you can run on this route. Although, considering that you had the capacity to do intercity services in the old train simulator version, I wouldn't be surprised if in this newer version you can use the BR101 locomotive on this route, because that comes with the white intercity coaches. Though, curiously, no cab car. I think, I seem to recall that's something I pointed out before. Because it might have been the time where I drove, I think it might have been when I drove the BR101 on the Nakhva Dresden route. Because I seem to recall doing that run quite recently. Uh, when I did, uh, it would have been a run I tried doing with commentary. Because I actually remember um, that when I tried that run, I had to like, re like keep, I keep having to stop the recording and like try to restart the game because the frame rate was doing my head in. And uh, mind you, I got there in the end. Otherwise, I wouldn't be think of making notes to put in a a card or an info card in the right in the top right corner to that uh, to that video. Sorry, I'm just reading this out loud, it well, was sort of like mumbling before anything else. Incidentally, I just realised I've noticed, good thing I've just noticed that 
uh, reduction in the speed limit when I did. You can see that it's now going to 130 kilometers an hour. It's one of the few things I know about Germany is that they don't use the imperial system. And they, and they only use metric. That's what the station is. There's no one waiting. I haven't seen it yet, but I do hope, like, I haven't loaded up timetable mode on this route yet, but I do hope that these uh, destination displays do actually work in timetable mode. Um, right, that's why right, we're trying to find out what the station is. There's a sign, what does it say? This is Achrensburg. Or is it Achrensburg? Because I'm trying to think back into how you pronounce Hamburg. And, uh... If, if there's an E there, instead of a U, that's like... What's the... No, not not Nuremberg. Uh, I can't actually remember. We had to just teleport it back to a screenshot from the loading center or something. It's really strange. That's funny how these screens Way I hope to God it's going to stop it before I cut it in the middle. Now, these sh now that I've never seen shelters like this before. I'll tell you what it reminds me of. <laughs> Bloody BP petrol stations. Okay, I thought that was the station's name, but isn't... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Al Ausgang is... Isn't that German for exit? I really don't know. Like, what is, let's see what this is. Achrensburg Gartenholz. As always, I probably pronounced that wrong. But, uh, I like how it's got this, uh, what looks like a ramp for wheelchair access. Although, it does seem a bit long, but... If I was designing, like, wheelchair ramps like this, I would want to make sure that the incline was, shall, w was reasonably steep, but not too steep, because I... There it goes again. I can't understand why it keeps briefly cut it, it's cutting back to the loading screen. Since that just doesn't usually happen. What was I saying earlier? Um, yes, yeah, so I I'm pretty sure I, I've never had I've never been confined to a wheelchair myself, but I I would imagine that they would know that people in that situation wouldn't want to be. Yes, I am aware of the fact that I've noticed the 90k speed limit far too late, and, but I am trying to slow down as quickly as possible. As I was saying, um, I know, well, I would, um, I think that people in that sort of situation, although, please do correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm very out of touch with what it's like to be, to be someone of reduced mobility. If anything, I'm more of a more than a mental issue myself, rather than physical. Well, I say physical issue, despite the fact that I do consider that the Olivia Newton John song is a guilty pleasure. There's another station whose name I don't know how to pronounce. I just realised I've hardly taken this reach out to this one. I'll try to remove really that. Even so, I'll probably only put one screenshot in the thumbnail. As I was saying, regarding like the shallow or like the gradients of a wheelchair ramp, I'd want to make sure that it wasn't too steep because I did once see a video on I think it was Jeff Marshall's channel where him and Vicky were, or his friend Vicky, or for all I know they might actually be partners. But anyway, Jeff and Vicky were at this railway station on the I believe the Heart of Wales line. I forget what the station's name was, but they had a friend. The friend that they had with them, she was in a wheel, wheelchair and they showed her really, really struggling to get up the slope from the, like the car park onto the platform. And that's what I initially thought of when I saw the, uh, when I saw the wheelchair ramps back at Ar Arkansas Guts and Holtz. I think once I've finished with this journey, I might have to do some, do some research to try and work out what sort of passenger services run along this route in real life. I can't think of it. I'm also trying to look for what sort of freight services run along here as well. Although, I've never really been able to work out that much in, like, on 
the operating practices with German, like German freight trains. Uh, it's a different story for New Zealand, of course, because uh, this is obviously where I live. And I would imagine that uh, for whichever country you're in, it would be a lot easier to find out information on freight trains in your own country rather than excuse me, rather than everywhere else. Back in the notes, got oh, my notes I've put in, and I've got to put down on this paper. And because I always like write down the name of the route, the scenario or service, and like what type of locomotive I'm driving or multiple unit, but obviously in this case, we're a locomotive. And I've noted the scenario name as being well, you see it there on this menu, this little menu is new to the area, and I think that's uh, well, to quote a song from the Kira, so wonderfully, 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 wonderfully fitting. And that is the closest I'm ever going to get to doing a pre doing an impression of Robert Smith. Mind you, because I can't, I can't sing at all. Kup, Kup for Mueller. I remember the first part of that name because it's like uh, Kup for Hummer on the Frankfurt U-Bahn. And uh, Kup for Hummer is the fourth to last stop on line U3. The majority of that route out from Südbahnhof is uh, it's double track, of course, and but past Kupferhammer, it actually goes to single track for two more stations, which are Rosengarten and Baulust, before the terminus at Oberösterreich. As I was saying, <laughs> I quite I like I quite like the name of this scenario because that's essentially what I am. I'm recording this this journey because I am well technically new to the area even though I have previously driven on the train simulator version this route before and because it's been such a long time since I last drove on it I don't really remember too much of it in fact all I really do remember is that that section of the S-Bahn line that runs parallel to the main line between Hasselbrook and uh, Hamburg Halt Bundle. And speaking of Hamburg, I of course remember the classic Hamburg to Hanover route train simulator, which I remember I got with the train simulator 2014 package. And recently, or relatively recently, I did put up a uh, video showcasing the, the. Essentially, it was a nostalgia trip looking back at those. Or, or no, three routes in the TS 2014 package. I'm going to slow down because I've just noticed that we are very close to Bad Oldersville. Well. I usually try to be going no faster than 100, than 100 kilometers an hour. When, well. I usually try to get down to at least 100 kilometers an hour before about a, a kilometer from the stop marker. Mind you, I do I have had enough experience with these things in TSW to know that uh, locomotives and multiple units generally have very different driving and stopping patterns from each other. try to enter the platform at like no faster than 70 or 60 kilometers an hour. Although it generally does depend on the braking capability or what, whatever you're driving. Incidentally, I, I'm surprised I haven't thought of... I'm surprised I haven't thought of uh, this... Oh, hold on a second, I'll just fiddle with the settings slightly. Uh, options, settings, stop marker, on, oh uh, no, off, because I really don't like seeing those stupid colour markers there on the track, because uh, I just think they look too, well, they're just, it's too much of a visual distraction, uh, and I just prefer to go, or to aim just for this little blue marker, even though I obviously don't, but you can't always do it right. Slightly off, but I'm not. I'm not bothered. 
Good thing is that we're actually so early that it's a decent time to have a look around the station. In which case, I'm going to get some more screenshots of the locomotive. By the way, uh, I only learned this recently. When, like from New Zealand locomotive Facebook groups or something of that nature, when you get an angle on a locomotive like this, that's called a roster shot. And it's, it is actually my preferred type of photograph to get with a locomotive. Even though it's not that cre artistically creative, if that's the right term. Uh, I believe the reason they call it roster shots is because it's like if the, if the railway company was going to put up or put out a book or booklet of the the loc of the all their motive power, and they would include the shots like this as a basic showcase of what they look like, or like a, or sort of a like posing for the roster. I'm guessing, hence the term roster shot. Now. It seems my memory was right, because I have correctly memorised where I got one of the last scenes for that Ice Train Evolution video. It was from, I think I had, it, I had it set up so that... Hold on, if I can get over to these bay platforms. Incidentally, I don't know what the prefix Bard means. In this case, of course, we're at Bard Oldeslo. And I have seen other names like that before. Right, so what, can, what is there to see around here? Bike racks. Now, uh, I think it might have been these platforms. What does that building say? Rotten. To me, as a New Zealander, that just looks like it's saying rotten fabric, but I'm pretty sure that's not what it's meant to say. Uh, although I do like that little bit of detail, though. Um, anyway, so, what was I saying? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I think for that Ice Train Evolution video, I did have, I think in this platform, just here, the, not the one I'm standing on, the one I'm looking at. I'm pretty sure I put in a static consist of a BR218 locomotive and Doppelstockwagen coaches. By the way, the uh, old train simulator version of the Doppelstockwagen coaches is horrible. What is that supposed to say? Uh, Model Eisenbahn. That's a point. I wonder if, like, if in real life any stations on this route, like, display advertising for, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it called Miniature Wunderland? That absolutely huge model railway exhibition in Hamburg. It's like one of the largest model railways in the world. Because that would actually be quite, quite cool in a way to get advertisements for that layout, that huge layout at stations on a line where there is a direct connection to Hamburg. Was the, obviously the idea being you could see those adverts, then take the train into Hamburg and uh, work out a way of getting, well I actually don't know where in Hamburg the Benito Wunderland is. Yeah. I remember I first saw it, I think on, it was I think it was a program presented by James May if you're any bit familiar with the original Top Gear, you'll know who James May is. But of course he also presented a few programs relating to railways. And actually, ironically, I I don't know if irony is the right term, but I did find out about James May, not from not from Top Gear, but from his railway video uh, railway documentaries. So he rather famously built a double-O scale track along the old standard gauge railway formation between Barnstable and Biddeford in England. And the first attempt was a complete failure because they only got as far as, I think it was called Insto, which wasn't obviously not all the way to Biddeford. Then on the second attempt, he did manage to get his worn out 1970 Flying Scotsman model all the way to Biddeford. So I hate to think what the scale distance would have been. In the real distance, I think, would have been like seven or eight miles. Right, so, as I was saying before I got completely sidetracked, in one of those platforms off to the side there, I put the BR218, and I think in either this platform here, or another platform over, no, it would have been in this specific platform, 
I had it set up so that the ICTD diesel unit would come in off this other line that's coming in from that direction there. It's not the one that we'll be taking, but I don't know where that line goes off to. And yeah, I just had that set up as the last, one of the last scenes for the video. And for whatever reason, I also included the Danish IC3 DMU and like a couple of scenes of that passing by. I mean, as I, although that's somewhat prototypical, because as I said earlier, I'm pretty sure that those units are used on Humboldt to Copenhagen services in real life. Right, so now that we're leaving Bad Oldeslo, that means the next station is Reinfeld. Again, I do apologise if I pronounced that wrong. But I do, what I do know is that after Reinfeld, that that is our, that is our last until we stop, so the next one after that will of course be Lubeck. Although I can't understand why there's no uh, there's no time set here for Lubeck, considering we've got times like listed times for these two intermediate stops. But anyways, you can see here what these instructions are saying that once we get to Lubeck, we'll have to shut down the locomotive. Although I can't imagine it would be shut down I was about to say uh, shut down, I kept wanting to say sundown, as in, or which is the name of a song from Gordon Lightfoot. Incidentally, I mainly know of Gordon Lightfoot from his song recording the record of the Edmund Fitzgerald. And I can suffice to say I can highly recommend uh, looking for both of those songs. You can easily find them on YouTube. They're well worth a listen. Uh, both written, both written by Gordon Lightfoot himself, and of course the, the record of the Edmund, Edmund Fitzgerald is a rather haunting, but fairly accurate, essentially retelling of. Well, not necessarily a retelling of, but it's a very haunting story of, well, the true story of the sinking of a ship called the Edmund Fitzgerald, which was on the Great Lake. I think it was on the Great Lakes. November 1975. For the life of me, I cannot remember whether it was in like Lake Superior or Michigan. It might have been Lake Superior, but I seriously cannot remember for the life of me. But I do remember that yeah, that 29 people were lost in that sinking. I'm not explaining what I mean by lost, because hopefully you should know. No, no disrespect to people who don't know. Anyway, I think I'll try to get back to this BR112 locomotive. And, and as I remember saying earlier, as we were leaving Hamburg, first impressions are somewhat mixed, in all honesty. Um, because, to me, it just feels so much like the older VR143, it's not funny. I mean, the sounds, I think, I'm pretty sure the sounds are exactly the same. I mean, the horn is certainly the same. It's, I would have thought that in real life, these things would have different horns. I mean, sit, I mean in Dovetail's case, like, for, oh, that score there, just briefly, that is the number of DC. That being Kiwi Rail's DC 4594. I think I've filmed that engine before for a video on this channel, but I can't remember which one, so I can't really provide a link to it, unfortunately. And yes, I have noticed that we're getting close to Reinfeld. Tell you what, this timetable is really quite relaxed. Because you know, as you would have seen, we arrived at like Bad Oldeslo about like five minutes early. I'll tell you one thing I have noticed, like another, besides the headlight configurations, I've noticed at least one other difference between the BR112 and the BR143, and that is top speed. As you see, the older BR143 can only go as fast as 120 km an hour, whereas the 112 can go all the way up to 160, which, if I'm not mistaken, is the equivalent of 100 miles an hour. 
mind you, in Germany's case, of course, it's, they quite often, these trains quite often break a ton, which in their case, of course, would be 100 kilometres an hour. Just realised I'll probably miss the stop marker here as well. As long as I, well, I hope I've still got all the coaches on the platform, but once again, we've got, we've arrived early enough to get some time to go looking around the platform. <coughs> Excuse me. I find it quite curious how this locomotive, or how this updated version of the 143 can go up to uh, 160 kilometers an hour. Well, in other words, I, I'm, a bit, I'm wondering why the BR112 is so much faster than the 14, well it's not so much faster, but still faster than her older sister, essentially. Even though I've actually quite... That's on the other side. <laughs> even though I find it somewhat strange that, or even though I'm actually quite enjoying this run for the most part, I do find it really odd that Dovetail would have decided to remake this route for TSW because in all honesty there's just not that much about this route that's really truly remarkable. It's not like the uh, Toronto Rump from... Okay, why are those... why are those not on the tail lights? Uh, I suppose I could fix that. I would have thought that there would be an instruction back at Hamburg Hauptbahnhof so that you could actually go to the back cab or to the cab car and set the tail lights. And then it's curious how it lets you drive off without technically setting up the train properly because if you try driving your train in say World of Subways Volume 3 without setting up the tail lights, I think it w you will actually get penalised. So I'm surprised that they've dumbed it down here in, in, in what is actually a newer game. Actually, there's a lot of dumb aspects about Train Sim World, but sometimes, I, well more often than not, I generally just find myself, for, well not necessarily forgiving the, the dumb aspects, but I think in some ways the best way of going about things is to I don't know if go with the flow is the right expression, but what I'm saying is that despite all the issues I've got with TSW2, there are still enough positive aspects about it to keep me, keep me coming back and playing the game every once in a while. And, usually, and I don't know if I've explained this before, but I do like to... I always like to cover video. Uh, I always like to cover new add-ons and things, like as close or as soon after the release as possible. But even the, but that is only, but that's only for an add-on that. I, well, I only do that for add-ons I actually want to buy. Uh, so like the Metro North Harlem line, which and they'll be coming up after the. My look on that route will be coming up after this one. And. I, well, especially with Train Sim World, I just realised we're rolling back slightly. With Train Sim World 2, especially, I don't like to, I don't like to spend my money on add-ons that I don't truly enjoy, just from their idea alone, and consequently add-ons that, well, I wouldn't buy add-ons that I don't enjoy the basic premise of, and that I wouldn't necessarily like driving after buying it. Which is, in and that's interesting because whilst I do have the vast majority of the routes available, because I think currently I've got about 27 routes in my collection, or 28, there are still a few TSW routes that I've never bought, and I don't think they will buy. And that being the West Somerset Railway, LGV Mediterranean, which is French, of course, and I think more recently they've got the Skyhook Games put out Cane Creek, which from what I gather is not a good route at all. 
even though it is focused on Union Pacific freight workers. I do, well, just from looking at that, I do like Union Pacific Railroad. And, uh, and then there was also that Sherman Hill route that Dovetail brought out, which is another remake that, like Humbug to Lubeck here, Sherman Hill and TSW2 is a remake of the old train simulator version, though for whatever reason, and this is actually one of the reasons I, that put me off of getting the TSW version. From memory, it doesn't actually include uh, the diversionary route called Track 3. It just includes the main, the main line, or Tracks 1 and 2, between Shane and Laramie. And I'm just thinking, Dovetail, what the hell are you on? Like, do you always seem to leave out bits of routes that were on the original train simulator version. For example, you left out, for whatever reason, you left out the Sheerness branch from the remake of London Faversham. Why? And come to think of it, the, the Midway Valley line is also missing. Um, but the main reason why I don't want to get routes like Cane Creek or or Shannon Hill or the upcoming Horseshoe Curve. It's quite simple. I just don't really care for the heavy or US heavy freight roads. My phone's just gone hang. Okay, I'll shit, I'll have to check that once I finish this one. about TSW routes that I don't want to buy. I mean, I'm not saying that these routes are absolutely horrendous and should never buy them. I mean, it's it's your money, so as long as you feel you're spending it wisely, do whatever you want with it. And don't make the same mistake I did, where I was spent like that. Like $160 on yet another model locomotive when I'm supposed to be saving up for a trip to Wellington. But I have already realised how stupid that was, so I am actively trying to to not make the same mistake. Especially since it'd be quite expensive to go to Wellington. So I've pretty much already explained the reasons why I haven't got Sherman Hill and Cane Creek and Horseshoe Curve. Um, which in some ways is disappointing because, as I said earlier, I do like the Union Pacific Railroad. But I just wish there, was, there were slightly more interesting routes available to do with UP. As it stands now, the only Union Pacific content I've got in my TSW2 collection is actually just the GP38-2 locomotive that you get with the Peninsula Corridor route, which is from San Francisco to San Jose. And that is... Actually, I can't remember why. Well, of course, I remember why I got Peninsula Corridor, because I like the Caltrain operation and curious community trains in general. It's just that the Union Pacific GP38 uh, comes with that route. And it's kind of like with Humboldt to Lubeck here, where it comes with the that that black or another black MRCE locomotive. And even I haven't seen any of the any freight service at all on this run. It's just been the double the sets of double stock bargain coaches with the VR112 locomotive. Though I dare say in time travel mode, the AI traffic would be a lot more theory. That's the right word. So, going back to the thing with TSW routes that I don't really want to buy, is the reason why I'm completely, I'm completely avoiding getting with Somerset Railway is simple. No steam. What's the point? And this is something I've been wondering ever since the route was released. And this is mainly a question directed at Dovetail Games. Why would you buy, why would you make a route or, or like a recreation of steam or a heritage line that is predominantly hauled by or where the services are mostly hauled by steam locomotives only to not include any steam locomotives 
and only like to only include diesels. Like, where's the logic in that? Um, and I, I think what Dovetail should have done is waited until waited until they actually got steam locomotives in the game before actually releasing any routes that steam locomotives run on in real life. Um, another route that I've just remembered for this in TSW that is so awful that I don't think I'll ever buy it is Rivet Games' horrendous West Cornwall local. Where do I even start with that route? Well, basically, I, I can probably, if anything, this is mainly going off the top of my head. It's not like I've got, I haven't written down any notes to talk about West Cornwall local because I didn't think I would be. I can, the reasons why I will never buy West Cornwall Local can be summed up as follows. One, I am well pissed off at the fact that the Falmouth branch is not included, despite the fact that the St Ives branch is. So in other words, if they were able to include one, uh, like a branch line, why could they not include another? In other words, in to so short and really condensed version, annoying missed opportunities. That's my first point. Second point. Why is there no class 43 HST included with the route, or Intercity 125, whatever you call, whatever it's called this week? Because uh, of course, in real life, I mean, the route is set in like the 1990s, and the class, or well, the Intercity 125s, they would have first entered service about 1976. So even in the 90s, they would have still been a pretty common sight on services like Intercity services to and from Penzance. Um. The third thing is, from what I've seen of the overall detail, like, because I recently saw, a while ago I saw a video, I think it was from James Class 37, where he was doing a gameplay video of driving a Class 150 from St. I uh, St. Earth to St. Ives in return. And I remember him pointing out and commenting on how poorly done the scenery was in some places. Like the beach around Leyland and Leyland Saltings just didn't look right. For example, and another problem is another problem with that route is it's not really the route itself, mainly the train. It's just the awful sounds on the Class 150. Like from what I understand, the well, Armstrong Powerhouse actually provided the sounds for the 150, but Rivet Games really did screw them up in editing, and it left that class 150 not really sounded like a real 150 at all and um, I think they got the idle sounds right but the engine revs and specific patterns that they have on the real 150s they were just missing on the TSW version and uh, yeah it's uh, the reasons why I'm not I'm never going to get West Cornwall local are essentially summar summarized as a very very short route with only with far too many missed opportunities in terms of like route extensions so that it doesn't go stale and awful sa awful sounds on the class 150 and a lack of an HST so that's pretty much the three basic reasons as to why I will never get West Cornwall local but yes on a more positive note I'm pleasantly surprised that, we're, that we've been able to finish this, well not just about finish this run from Hamburg to Lubeck. I can't stress this enough, this is act, this is, really is the first time I've tried recording a service on this route. And considering I've never properly driven the BR112 before, I'm frankly amazed that I've been able to finish this run. Mind you, the 112 is so is so incredibly similar to the BR143 that uh, that I don't know that I was able to I guess it was I guess it was just so easy no so similar the BR112 is so similar to the BR143 that driving this thing is relatively easy if you're familiar with the 143 Incidentally, actually, just thought, um, side on, uh, this looks identical to the BR143, and I wonder if Dovetail did just take the model for the BR143 and only slightly alter it 
to get the BR-112. I mean, although, for all I know, they might have actually just done an entirely new model from the ground up, and it's just a, a happy coincidence that it look that it just resembles the BR-143 as strongly as it does. Pantograph selector. Ooh, that's a point. Let's see how this thing. I'm going to see how this thing looks with, if I, if it can actually raise both pantographs. That, no, raises none of them. Although, I wonder if having pantograph selected to both is just. Okay, there's no noise. Oh, I suppose it's driver's controls uh, that raise the pantograph. Where is it? I, I just realised me fiddling around with the pantograph controls is somewhat pointless. Actually, I just heard a little zap, which I think might be the pantograph disengaging from the wires. Okay, I didn't think that would actually work. Okay, I, 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 mean, I will admit that it, this is rather pointless, but I just think it's, in some ways, I think it's funny to see a locomotive with both pantographs raised. Although, it do, to me, it begs the question, why why does this locomotive have two pantographs in the first place? Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other examples of a locomotive, of an electric locomotive with two pantographs when really they only need one. I don't think the British Rail Class 90 had them, but now that, of course, now that we're at Lubeck, now that we've finished the run, we can. We're just going through the process to shut down the locomotive. Yep, that's the same setup for the reverser as, like, the reverser handle and things as the 143. So uh, the best, so the best way I can really summarise that what it's like to drive the BR 112 is that it's the same as the 143, only the front or the cabin. Or the, each end of the locomotive, as well as the cab interior, is is a little bit more modern, looks a little bit more modern and refined. But uh, there's not really that much else I can say, so I think oh, I might as well leave it for now. So yeah, until next time. Oh, so I'm terrible with these. So yes, now that we're at the end of our run, I'd just like to say thank you very, very much for watching, and I hope, and I really do hope that you've enjoyed this look at the, what's well, actually my first look at the Halbstricker Hamburg to Lübeck route in Train Sim World 2. Alright, take care everyone, and I'll see you in the next video, which will be about the Harland Line.